Well, my peeps, listen, we got the Allen's coffee flavored brandy on the table today. I'm feeling a little, you know, adventurous this morning. It is the morning for those of you that are just tuning in. I'm gonna put my password in here. You probably saw that, didn't you? Shit, it didn't work. Why didn't it work? You got to work for me, homeboy. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. We're having problems with the password this morning, people. Let's see what we got here. We're in. Oh. I always get super nervous as soon as I open up my emails in the morning. By the way, you can't get Allen's Coffee Brandy in Michigan. I know. Why do you have it on the table, Jim? Well, it's because it's delicious. My good buddy Ethan, shout out to Ethan. Every time he goes home to Maine, he brings back a jug for me. Because it's that good. Allen's, bring it to Michigan. It's so good. It's the best coffee-flavored liqueur. It says brandy, but let's be honest. It's like a super awesome, better than Bailey's, better than Kahlua. Pick a bourbon cream. Sorry. I'm not going to argue with you about it. It's the best. I put a Diet Coke on the table. Here's a, here's a wild thing. We'll get back to the opening of the email. I haven't had a, a soda poppy. I haven't had any, one of my sodies uh, all summer long. And uh, it is September 3rd, folks. Summer. Today's the last day of summer in this little, in this little town. Right? It's all over. Back to life. Back to reality. Locals get to have the beach back. There's something about this DC that just called to me this morning. So I might open it. I might not. Stay tuned for my reaction. Anyways, when I open up my computer in the morning, it's like, okay, you know, let the anxiety begin. And not so much for the barrage of emails that I get. Because I get quite a few. But it's usually like Karen left a review. Anyways, first thing that shows up this morning, review alert robot. That comes from uh, Google. The Google machine sends me out. Listen, five reviews in August. This episode is brought to you by Chapo's Northside Bar, voted best burger and wings in town. Yeah, you heard that right. If you're going to go out for a burger or wings or both, you might as well go to the place that's voted the best. The best. Why wouldn't you have anything less? Look, and if you're not down for a burger or wings, that's cool. They've got salads, wraps, and sandwiches also. And this summer, it's going to get wild because on June 24th, it kicks off their summer concert series in the parking lot. Live music, folks. And guess what? It's free. Yeah. Come down for the music. Stay for the fun. Enjoy the best burger and wings in town. Chapo's Northside Bar. This episode is brought to you by Just Clean, Manistee's premier car wash located at 146 Cleveland Street or just north of the US 31 Bridge. Look, if you're anything like me, you're not going to spend an hour or two in the hot summer sun in your driveway trying to wash your vehicle. I don't have time for that. So I always take my truck to Just Clean. I choose their ultimate car wash, which includes a triple foam conditioner, a ceramic coating plus wax, and a 60 second heated blow dry. They are the only car wash in town offering the ceramic coating. For my money, I choose Just Clean, and I hope you do too. This episode is brought to you by Brandon Ball, broker owner of Dwelling Realty in Manistee, Michigan. Listen, are you looking to sell your home? Then look no further. When you list with Brandon Ball, you'll get a trusted advisor who will guide you through the entire selling process. With extensive knowledge of the local market, he'll help you price your home competitively to attract the right buyers. And with proven market strategies, your home will be seen by the most qualified buyers. With the 17 years in the business, you'll have someone who's experienced and on your side. Contact Brandon today to get started selling your home. 231-690-4981 or Brandon at dwellingrealty.com. The average review rating for August. 
wasn't the greatest. We were down a little bit. 4.40. Not getting all the five stars. And a lot of that has to do with, you know, we're kind of emotionally depleted down at Manistee Beverage. You know, for those of you that uh, aren't in the constant uh, words, use your words, Jim. For those of you that aren't in the uh, customer service industry, you know, it can be a little taxing. I pride myself on trying to be a positive human. I try to push out air quotes here, good vibes, okay? Because I know that what you give, you receive. And that is a that is a really important thing to me. When I can put positive energy into the universe, you know, the goal is to get that positive energy back. And hopefully more than, you know, you want to give so that you can receive some awesomeness. So that's what we try to do. But anyways, there are some days that it's like, Jesus Christ, this day will never end. And, you know, the mood gets dimmed. The light gets dimmed. Um, the waters get muddy. It's like trench warfare sometimes. And uh, we can't please everybody. And as humans, we're all allowed to have kind of the ebbs and flows of life, the ups and the downs. And, uh, you know, I, I'm happy to say that my ups are way more than my downs. But when my downs are there... Uh, you don't always get the high vibe guy, (laughs) you know, and I find that I get a shitty review because I wasn't like clown hands at the store, you know, we're trying to be authentic as possible and, uh, I'm not going to fake positivity. I think that's kind of shitty also. So I'll do my best to put on you know, a smiling face. And all I ask is that my team members do the same thing. But sometimes it's just like, you're being ridiculous with your reviews. We're going to do a show at the end of the year. We're going to call it the year in review. And we're going to fire through the good ones too. We're going to talk about the good reviews because they were many. But we'll t- we'll kind of get into some of the ones that I feel were a little, come on, you having that bad of a day. So, and anyhow, this morning, no reviews. So either people are still stewing or we were just kind of baseline over the last couple of days. And that's okay, too. So um, also, I appreciate the review system. Daddy doesn't really read the reviews a whole lot um, unless one comes firing in at one star. And then I got to be like, okay, who's shit in your Wheaties this morning? (laughs) Who took a steamer in your coffee? That you weren't, like, that you didn't receive the type of red carpet that you were expecting when you walked into the liquor store. Hey, real quick. I had a review the other day. Started off awesome, except it was a three-star. And I was like, oh, three stars. What happened here? And uh, boom, store was clean. Everything was great. Fully stocked. Inventory was amazing. Prices were perfect. Couldn't ask for anything better, but the checkout was a little lackluster. So does that mean there wasn't no confetti or balloons? I don't know, but three stars, lackluster checkout. Boop, 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 boop. Did you find everything okay? Great. Boop, boop, boop. Have a great day. Give me a little lackluster. There's my morning rant. We're going to get in to the uh, Allen's Coffee Brandy here soon. I think we've got to start the day off with a little bit of a banger just to kind of get going. Uh, What's going on in the world today? And when I say world, I mean Manistee. So it appears that, uh, you know, some exciting news for Manistee County, for the township of Parkdale, uh, for the area adjacent to Myers apostrophe s we're getting culvers they're gonna do it they're gonna tear down an old house and we're gonna have butter burgers and frozen custard us 31 going north you're gonna catch us coming and going people we are becoming we have landed on the moon 
Manistee is now going to be a true area for destination. People are going to come from miles around just to taste, just to get their hands around, their tongue around, their teeth into the deliciousness that is a butter burger. Got to be honest, wouldn't know. For a lot of you know that I don't eat meat. I don't eat red meat. Uh, so the butter burgers, uh, no bueno for this guy. But I know it's probably delicious. So yeah, they're going to come from all over to our sleepy little town because now we have frozen custard. From what I hear, it's better than ice cream. Well, at least they're going to drive if they're between Ludington and Manistee. So they're going to flip a coin and say, well, is Manistee closer than the Culver's in Ludington? Is Manistee closer than the Culver's in Travers? Is there a Culver's in Cadillac? I don't know. It's as if they're trying to form a pentagram. What if Culver's? No, we're not going to go down that road. Anyways, Culver's is coming to town. I'm kind of pumped for that. It's, you know, when you start thinking about progress, what is progress? Is progress more fast food? I don't know. But when I was a kid growing up in Manistee and we had a Hardee's and an AMW. That was our fast food. And you know what? I think that was kind of perfect back then. When we got a McDonald's, that is exactly when the opioid epidemic started in Manistee. I'm just kidding. I can remember when we got the McDonald's, it was like, that, it was a destination for dinner. <laughs> it sounds so American. But as soon as McDonald's came to Manistee, it was the most exciting thing, um, I think, since the first car that drove down River Street. Um, you could just see things were starting to change. Then came the Burger King. And then came, you know, Taco Bell KFC. Which, by the way, is probably the most underrated fast food chain. Two in one, folks. You get two in one. But then Kmart closed, and we were like, fuck, where are we going to get our T957s? Where are we going to get our Wranglers? Man. Little things. Then a prison. Then a casino. Then a Myers. And now, a Culver's. Are you kidding me? <laughs> things are looking up, folks. Things are looking up. I'm, I'm scrolling through Facebook while we're... Uh, while we're chatting, you and I, because um, there's usually some good shit here first thing in the morning. I wonder how Labor Fest went last night. Man, I wish I had the energy for something like that. Uh, for those of you that don't know, Labor Fest is this really awesome event that's put on by Salt City Rock and Blues to fundraise for the amphitheater that they're trying to build down at first street beach which i think is going to be sick once it's done and last night the headliner fog hat we were playing a little excuse me a little fog hat down here at the store yesterday kind of after we ran through multiple itunes music lists dedicated to jimmy buffett rest in peace Sad day yesterday, Jimmy Buffett passing away. Um, I wonder what happened. You know, you feel like you know somebody when they've kind of been in that, in like, been famous for so long. And you're just kind of like, oh. When you, when you absolutely have no idea who that person really is, but they've been around, they've been famous, they've been in the news, they've been on TV, they've been in your headphones, they've been on your radio... You, you, you feel like you know them, you know, and then you, you, you get the news that they pass away, and you're like, good shit. It kind of hurts a little bit, you know. Betsy texted me yesterday, and I didn't hear the news, and she said, I hope you're playing some Jimmy Buffett down at the store. And I'm like, what? So then I checked. I got in the Googler, and uh, sure as shit, Jimmy Buffett passed away. You know, it was rough for a little bit there, like, man. Anyways, Fog Hat was established in 1971. Wow. Right? So when you hear 
some of their music on the radio, it's like, man, they've been around for decades. And they jammed last night. They got after it last night down at First Street Beach in Manistee, Michigan. Um, thanks to the crew at Salt City Rock and Blues for putting uh, this event together and bringing some you know, awesome music to the community. And hopefully you made a bunch of money to help go towards that, uh, that amphitheater you guys are trying to build. So that's really sick. Um, But man, it's been a summer, hasn't it, folks? For those of you that are listening, that you're in the, uh, you know, the customer service industry on a downtown in a smaller community, and your business really thrives on, you know, four months of just absolute chaos with tourists, vacationers, second homeowners, people coming up with their families every weekend, from. Basically, you know, it kind of kicks off on Memorial. You have this uptick in June, and then summer officially hits around 4th of July, and it is absolute chaos until, you know, Labor Day weekend. You kind of bookend the summer with Labor Day. Um, it's been, there's, I, I feel like, and I've been saying this for, I mean, since we opened Manistee Beverage Company, but being a lifelong resident of this community, Every year, I don't know, maybe for the last decade, I've been saying it seems like more people are coming to town. Uh, And in the last seven years of having Manistee Beverage Company, every single year I've said, man, it seems like more people are downtown. The amount of human flesh walking around River Street Labor Day weekend, insane. At one point, I left the store to go get an Americana, three shots, maybe a quarter cup of water. That's kind of how I roll. Walk down to the outpost to get that little cup of heaven. And I felt like I had to like part the seas physically, like try to dig through this mass of human skin everywhere. Uh, amazing considering that you know the the bridge on 31 has been under construction and closed with a detour reroute you know for the last few months and it's going to continue to go through november um they've had to push the uh the finish date on that because of some unforeseen structural things they have to fix i guess whatever so to me that means january but anyways it's a pain in the ass to take that detour i get it uh, every morning, just that little extra couple of blocks, I got it. It's cumbersome, you know. It's like I just want to get to where I'm trying to get to. So, and I know there's a vat, there's a there's a huge number of people that are just trying to bypass downtown, and and uh, and to a larger extent, a lot of people trying to just bypass Manistee because they don't want to deal with this fucking construction. But boy, that hasn't stopped a lot of people. And like I said, it seems like there's so much more. And uh, we did pretty good. I think we're going to round out summer uh, net positive, which is always good. You know, we've kind of been on an uptick since we opened the store. Uh, We really haven't had, you know, we've had some downtimes. And a lot of that was a product of um, a certain flu season that came through. But uh, and we also had some benefits out of that, too, which is wild to talk about, maybe for another podcast. Um, the dust really hasn't quite settled on that whole topic yet. So we're going to steer clear for a little bit. Um, controversy. We don't want to go there. Anyways. It, it's like, it. anyways, it, it's wild to think. And everybody does this. I feel like everybody does this. Like, man, I can't wait till summer gets here. And then. It's like, man, it's so hot. <laughs> and it's, oh, I can't wait till sweater weather and pumpkin spice lattes. Hey, that it's coming, all right? It's coming pretty soon. And then it's like, well, I just want to, you know, go skiing or get on my, whatever. I don't do that stuff. So I'm always like, you know, I don't mind a little shoveling. And then the third time I have to shovel, I'm like, God, I fucking cannot wait until spring, right? So it's it's the same way in retail. It's a lot like the seasons. You know, we don't live in an area where it's just on 11 all the time. So we roll through the seasons economically here in Manistee. And, uh, 
you know, and that and we tie emotion to that. We tie emotion to, you know, summer and fall and spring and winter. We we tie emotion to like there's a certain amount of of uh you know, anxiety that you end up craving in March. You've gone through January and the February being the shortest month can feel like the longest month, especially when you're in retail and you're trying to keep the store open for 8, 10, 12 hours and you see a handful of customers versus a thousand that you see at peak season in um, in summer. So you find yourself craving that chaos of summer. And then you keep saying, it's coming soon. Even the team. Even the team is like, man, I can't wait till summer gets here, you know, in February and March. And then uh, summer hits, and there's an excitement at the beginning, you know, of June. And then about the second week of July, we're all looking at each other like, <laughs> when's it going to be sweater weather? See, we rounded that out nicely. We don't really talk a whole lot about winter here because all we're really doing is shoveling and paying the heat bills in some of these buildings that are, you know, like ours, 200 years old. But been a little bit of a rant. So like on my business page on um, Facebook, really all I see is business stuff. So we need to switch that over to um, the personal page, see what's happening on Facebook. Uh I don't know. I don't know about you, but you can drop me some comments, you guys. What? Who do you want to see me uh, try to get on the on the pod? We got some cool ones coming up. Uh, I'm going to be talking to Mark Sandstead, uh, local guy, kind of a local legend. I mean, he's been in the radio marketing, TV marketing, uh, kind of do it all marketing game for. I mean, probably decades at this point, and I'm excited to talk to him about his evolution, um, you know, in marketing. I'm excited to talk to him about his history in radio because I do think that radio is a super interesting uh, platform, and you know, Mark does some really cool things with Michigan bands, with uh, Michigan Rocks Radio, and uh, anyways, he's got a wealth of knowledge, and I'm sure a fuckload of stories and i and i'm really and i'm really excited to uh you know to kind of pick his brain and and have him take a deep dive in some of that history i think that's going to be i think it's going to be a really interesting chat and i hope you um can tune into that and listen we're also going to have theron ferguson on you know we're just gonna what i'm gonna do with theron is i'm just gonna turn the mic on he does a really good job of just talking. So <laughs> uh, we're going to have him talk about Essential Real Estate, which is his real estate company, and uh, talk about the, the markets in real estate here in Manistee and Manistee County, uh, how he sees things evolving, get his, uh, get his take, get his opinions on some of the developments and uh, the new things, the old things, the all things Manistee. I think that'll be a fun one. Also, bringing back... Lori McBride for part two of Are There Demons at Manistee Beverage Company? I'm just kidding. But I'm going to have her come on again, and we're going to try to do have her do a reading. I can be a little bit of an oak tree, a little bit of a solid rock, and it's hard to get shit out of me. So the goal is, the plan is, for me to try to open up emotionally so that she can talk to the spirits around me. And maybe give me a little guidance on the future. It's not going to hurt. Not going to hurt. And I think it'll be fun. Um, I also have a super long list of other people, other interesting humans that um, I want to talk to to come on. So once we get those people and dates on lock... I'll let you know. We'll get them going. It looks like everybody's just posting awesomeness and happiness about their Labor Day weekend. So that's great. And that's where we want to be. We want to be awesome. We want to be happy. Man, the but the pictures of Labor Fest look sick. I wish I could have went. 
I just don't have the energy after work. Anyhow, I'm going to round this out with a couple of things I want to talk about with respect to Nomi Racing, the company that I own with my good buddies Dylan Walker and Zach Pulowski. Uh The second half of our racing season is in full swing, and we are focused and dedicated and driven to put on an amazing endurance gravel bike race. You know it. You love it. What's it called? The Rusty Fish. Now, this year, I'm going to F this up. I know it. Zach put together a bunch of routes that kind of cater to, you know, the, the, the higher level, more conditioned athlete, all the way down to somebody that just wants to have a little fun ride. And I think that's wonderful. You know, we're trying to open it up to as many awesome humans as possible. Um, and when I say awesome humans, it's because this community, you know, the running, the gravel bike riding community, the trail running community, are just, it's just chalked full of rad humans and uh yeah you know yourself if you're in that community you're definitely probably a rad person you're not a dickhead which is where am i going with this anyways he's got a bunch of routes we got a 127 mile route which big boy bants on for that one uh we have the traditional 100 that we started uh the event with three years ago we also have a 66 mile and we have a 33-mile uh, bike race. And uh, honestly, even if you're just like somebody who can get on the bike on the weekend and do 20, 30 miles, I really think you can do the 127. It's a long day. Your ass is going to be sore when you're done. Make sure you have the chamois butter, uh, your desitin, whatever you use on hand. But, you know, at... We're saying, hey, if you can do this at 10 miles an hour, you know, it's going to take you 12 hours. That's a day, folks. That's not a big deal. It's just a day out riding. Uh, but anyways, you can come down from there. And we also put in a marathon. Uh, you know, it's 26.3. I know it's supposed to be 26.2. But uh, for whatever reason, Zach couldn't shave that extra off the back end. So. We're promoting it as a 26.3 because we're extra. So I am hoping by the end of the month, like on a Sunday around the 24th of September, um, if I can squeeze it in, I'm going to put out a, you know, a call to action. I'm going to do a pre-run, pre-ride somewhere around the end of September if you're interested. Uh, I'm probably going to set it up to be out on the, uh, the marathon course. Because I'm going to run some or all of it, depending on where my conditioning level is at that point. Um, I, I want it to be a good day. I don't want to be like, you know, killing myself at the end of a marathon for a, for just a fun day, a fun run. So I might do like a half um, or I might do like 15 miles or something like that of it. But uh, so you're going to you'd be welcome to join in the run or cycle a portion of it. So we might throw the. The, uh, the gravel bike ride portion of that uh, pre-ride, pre-run to be more of a, uh, you know, go do 30, 35 miles or even 40 miles of the course. And then we'll all meet back at the VFW, have some donuts, some cider, tell some stories, and uh, just kind of have a really uh, fun day with it. And get yourself an opportunity to get out there and get familiar with the course. Uh, we've already had a, a number of people reach out that have been out on it, and um, they've had they've had some success. They've enjoyed the course. Obviously, this is, uh, you know, northern Michigan on the west coast. There's going to be sand. There's going to be loose gravel. There's going to be washouts. I'm not trying to scare you away. That's just a really small portion of it. But if you're thinking this is going to be like pea gravel the whole way and nice and flat, coming to the wrong race, folks. But the elevation is not that high. I think we peak out somewhere around 35 to 3,800 uh, feet of elevation through the entire course so if you're doing 127 miles that's pretty flat so again that's why i say that longer course could definitely be something that a weekend warrior could pound out in a day so you should check it out um, so keep an eye out if you follow me on facebook uh the manistee beverage company page 
I will have a, a pre-ride event that goes out there. It'll be attached to the Rusty Fish Facebook page. Um, and you're welcome to join. You are welcome to join. Kind of a decent pour of the coffee brandy this morning. Um, but we're going to get after it. I went for a run this morning. I'm going to mix this with DC. Why not? You folks have a day today. I want you to keep... Oh, oh don't you dare fizz over. Keep an eye out for the event for the pre-ride slash pre-run. And uh, sign up for the Rusty Fish. RustyFish100.com This is a community event. Open to the public. So what I mean by that is you don't have to participate in the races. You can come to the party. Right? Presenting partner... Again, for this race, just like for Run the Pier, is Bell's Brewery. Shout out to Bell's Brewery. Coming to the table. Dollar dollar bills, y'all. So we want to show them that we can put on a, a just a kick-ass event. We want them to keep coming back, right? Shout out to North Channel Brewing Company for sprinkling a little dough to uh, come back to the table and uh, be a big partner for the event. Um I mean, it's it's solid when you've got local partners um, that are willing to put down some serious cheese. We've got a ton of local sponsors that came to the table and provided financial assistance to us to be able to put on this event. And uh, check them out. They're on our website, RustyFish100.com. Uh, you can go to RunThePeer.com and check them out there as well because they all pretty much did both races for us this year. Um, which is super rad. So thanks to them. M going forward, the discussion for these races is to make them more festival style. Uh, bigger, uh, we want to make them more you know, inclusive. How can we get more athletes to sign up for races? Well, we just have to, you know, we have some longer races that we're going to add, and we're going to shorten some things. You know, for Run the Pier, we really can't have a race that's smaller than a 5K. I mean, let's be real, right? Uh, but we are going to do some stuff for kids 10 and under. You know, we're going to have our fish fry bike race at Rusty Fish, which is, you know, for those younger kids um, to kind of get out there and do the same thing that Mommy and Daddy is doing, right? I want you guys to have a kick-ass day today. I'm going to try to keep my vibe high. Because I don't want one, two, or three star reviews. I want five star reviews. And if I got to do the clown hands to get those, no, nah, I won't. We're not going to fake positivity. I love you guys. Have a kick-ass day today. Here's a little Allen's Coffee Brandy in D.C. Cheers. Oh, Jesus. We're going to kick this day off right. <laughs>